Welcome back to the channel, guys. Today we're looking at Happy Models Crux 35. This is a custom build with HD Zero. As always, I'm Jeff with Titan FPV. Hold up, guys. Drop what you're doing. I need you to hit that subscription button, click that notification bell, so you'll be notified of all new content that I upload to the channel. This thing absolutely rips. So for the camera running the HD Zero Nano V1 camera, it's a 16 by nine camera. I am running a 40 millimeter cable. For the flight controller and all-in-one ESC, we've got the JGMCU Pro 25 amp version. For the VTX, we have the HD Zero Whoop, the original 200 milliwatt VTX. It's power switchable from 25 uh, and 200 milliwatts. For the antenna, I'm running the Foxeer Lollipop V3 UFL antenna. For the receiver, we're running the Beta FPV Nano receiver. Uh, this is the 2.4 gigahertz version. Now for the antenna, I did swap it to the Happy Model EP1 antenna just because it fits the OEM mount. The Beta FPV version is a little bit wider. We've got an XT30 connector out back. We do have a capacitor soldered to the battery leads. There is strain relief on the battery leads. For the motors, we've got these 1404 Holy Bro 3800 kV motors, these little rippers. For props, we're running these HQ 3x2.2 by blades. These are flying amazing. Uh, previously, uh, the 3.5 inch class didn't have a whole lot of options. I believe first uh, with the uh, Emacs of Vans that have been out for several years. And then HQ and uh, Jim Fan have come out with some tri-blades. But I believe these HQs are the first bi-blades. And these have been out for, I'd say, a good six months. But they've been performing amazing. So if you're thinking about trying them out on your build, I would definitely go with those. You do get the bi-blade howl, probably going to offer a higher top end and much better efficiency than the tri-blades, but you're not going to get the coring performance, but like I said, this is a light craft. I didn't have any issues there with uh, locking it in tight there. It does have the Happy Model battery strap. Now, they have since uh, put a smaller battery strap in as the original one with the bind and fly was just way too large for um, these micro batteries. Now, for batteries, I did run these Tattoo R-Line 750 uh, 4S LiPos. I'm getting about nine minutes flight time, just depending on flight style. All right, let's get a weight. This is with the camera mount. Looks like we're coming in about 98 grams exactly. And with the 4S 750, we're coming in at 182 grams. So even with an action camera, you're going to be coming well under the 250 gram mark. Looks like we're coming in at 209.9, just under 210 grams all up weight with the Runcam Thumb Pro. I knew the first time I flew the HD version of this frame that I was going to have to do a custom build. It reminded me so much of Bob Ruge's TP3 platform. The power to weight ratio is ridiculous. This thing gets up and goes. You know, this is 4S. Uh, the TP3 is going to be 3S. But the power to weight ratio uh, is similar. And the way these arms are so thin, it just cuts through the air. Uh, you can turn on a dime. Just a lot of fun. I mean, you're getting, um, you know, five inch near five inch performance uh, in a smaller three and a half inch platform. Now, you're not going to be able to throw the quad like you will uh, with the weight of a five inch, but it will get you in and out of tight situations quickly there. And the acro performance is just amazing. Now, this is more of a, a racer style frame with the bottom mount, but I mean, you can definitely freestyle on this. And have a lot of fun in your backyard park or even you know you can go out to the field put it on the track i don't know how it'd hold up in a crash uh let's see how thick these arms are now the bottom plate is an 
uh, all-in-one bottom plate. So it's a unibody versus the TP3 is going to have individual replaceable arms. So if you do crack this bottom plate or break this bottom plate, you're going to have to replace the, uh, the whole thing there. They do sell just the bottom plate. Let's see how thick these arms are. It looks like they're coming in at three millimeters. So decently thick for the size. So the top's going to be two millimeters thick. So yeah, I don't know how it perform in crashes, but uh, just for uh, you know a park flyer or backyard ripper, it's going to be amazing. So a lot of fun. It's a pretty easy build. There's a lot of room under the hood here. You do have to mount the flight controller. Uh, the, it's a Whoop board. Uh, it also has 20 by 20 mounting. The original, the Bind and Fly, has a 20 by 20 uh, flight controller, all in one ESC. I believe it's 12 amp. Now this one I've used is 25. But 12 amps was sufficient there for these 1404s. The bind and fly is running, I believe, a 3500 KB. So a slightly lower KB than the 3800 that I'm running. I don't think I set up motor output limit. I'll post beta fly set up here on the screen. I am running beta flight 4.3. This is the first quad that I set up 4.3 with. And it was fairly painless. I always take some time to transition over to new versions and make sure that they're stable. All the issues are resolved, but I did flash the UAV tech presets for toothpicks and it's been flying amazing. I've also flashed the latest version of Blue Jay and enabled RPM filtering. If you haven't checked out that video on how to do that, I'll post the link up here. Check that one out. And I'll also post the link to these uh, files. You can get these files on Happy Models website. But the mount for the Runcam Thumb Pro 4K. Pick that one up off Thingiverse. Credit the designer for that one. And I did print it all in this, this fluorescent yellow green color. It perfectly matched uh, Fox Sears uh, Lollipop. Uh, the camera, we've reviewed this one before. It is a 16 by 9 format. This is not the V2 nano camera, but you're still getting a great image. I just had another one of these laying around. It does have a uh, little camera cage here, so you can uh, recess the camera or bring it forward however you, uh, much you want. I believe this one's setting almost all the way back. So I got the standoff out of view there, but it still does provide protection. I haven't had any issue there. I haven't really crashed this one much. I don't like to do the walk of shame, so I uh, try not to crash. I mean, I guess it's easier said than done. But if you do crash, this one's been holding up well. Just based on the light, the lightweight, you have less inertia versus, you know, a heavier quad. I have used these, the Emacs tape to secure the motor wires. And like I said, uh, I did rotate the flight controller. 180 degrees uh, in beta flight. This is a Whoop uh, 25 and a half by 25 and a half flight controller. So it's a diamond flight controller. So normally, you know, you're going to have the front of the flight controller mounted in like a diamond orientation and now have it rotated to fit in this frame. The wires are longer on the rear motor versus the front motor. And it's just the opposite there on these uh, back motors. So just do notate that if you do plan to run a whoop style flight controller. I believe JHEMCU makes a 20 by 20 as well as the Happy Model. It's a 12 amp that has a built-in SBI Express LRS and the I think the FR Sky version for some reason which I wouldn't recommend you did run that. Uh, that's a 20 amp version for their flight controller. But as I stated I'm running an external receiver. I'm running the Beta FPV Nano receiver. If I do modify this antenna mount, I will upload those files to Thingiverse and include them in the descriptions below as well as the rest of those files. All in all, this is my new uh, favorite micro HD Zero build. If you're considering uh, building up a frame, I have previously built the 4-inch Micro Apex. That's going to be a different style quad. It's going to be much heavier, much sturdier. If you want to do a little bit of bando bashing with that, I would recommend that frame over this. It's going to have individual arms versus this one is an all-in-one bottom plate. But if you're flying over grass or soft area, this is going to be a great option. An easy build. 
I'll list the components uh, of the build in the description below as well. So if you want to build your own, it's going to be a simple build. Now you can substitute whatever 1404 motors that you want. Potentially a 1504 and a half, I think is what T-Motor offers, but that's going to be overkill. These 1404s for fun because this is lightweight. I do recommend this one. No complaints. I do have another bit of exciting information for you guys. The HD Zero goggles are coming sooner than later. I am a beta tester, so that means that I will be getting uh, the first production batch of the goggles. I'm going to bring that information as soon as I get it. Excited to bring that and be a part of uh, working with Carl there. The first batch is set to be available in November. The second batch of the goggles will be available, I believe, in December. So those are going to be for everyone to order. So if you're not a beta tester, don't fret, don't worry. You will get your chance to get your hands on some of the HD Zero goggle goodness before the end of the year. Now, you will be able to see the goggles at MultiGP uh, in mid to late October. So if you want to check those out, as well as the new 90 FPS camera, that's another thing that's coming. Uh, these goggles do have 1080p, uh, 90 hertz displays in them that's going to work with uh, select cameras that are coming out I believe they'll be at 540p so slightly lower resolution but a much higher uh, frame refresh rate so that's going to drop the latency even lower i did want to go over a few things about the goggles if you guys aren't familiar with those uh, they did drop the uh, final cad file so this is what the production version is going to look like They're open source so you can make your own mods um, as you see fit as well as the operating system, which I believe is going to be Linux. And that's also going to be uh, customizable there. So if you're a developer and you want to add to the community there with whatever options you see fit, we'll be able to do that. So maybe custom themes or other features. The goggles are a digital goggle, but they do offer an add-on module that adds... 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi connectivity, so you're able to stream to your smartphone, as well as it has a module bay for an analog module. You can use uh, Rapid Fire, uh, TBS Fusion, any other uh, you know Fat Shark style module. But the other thing with the analog, uh, it does have deinterlacing technology, so. It's going to provide a much more stable image. Ryan Quillett posted a video. I'll link his here in the video description. Just kind of about how that works. But it's just a much smoother and better looking analog image. So a lot of us, me included, do still fly some analog. And that's going to be the best performance there. So you're going to have all the features in there. As well as you're going to also have an HDMI in and out. So you could link up another monitor to share the viewing experience. Or you could put another, uh, say, uh, Orca does finally release their module, or I believe Walksnail is in talks about creating a mo an HD module. So you will have all the best options and custom ability with the new HD Zero goggles. So for me, it looks like, hands down, unless you're going with another digital system, even then it may be the best solution for you, especially for newcomers coming to the hobby. You're going to have the option to add HD or start out with HD as well as use analog. Really exciting times, guys. I'm going to post some of the other uh, specs of the goggles up here on the screen. You can take a look at those. I believe they've been covered in depth uh, by other reviewers. But I just wanted to drop a quick note because that's pretty much uh, in the FPV community what we've been waiting for. Exciting stuff. Uh, thanks again for tuning in. Uh, if you're not already subscribed, go ahead and click that subscription button as well as the notification bell. Leave a comment down below on your thoughts. And as always, we'll catch you in the next one.